So one of the first things that I want to check here is what is uh, what does this flat surface look like here on the um, what I'm calling the base uh, or not the base? Sorry, this is uh, this would be like the column. And I don't know what's going on here. Somebody ran a bolt or something, and then there's some scratch marks, kind of scribe marks here. So anyway, step one is get this all stoned up and make sure there's no real high spots in it, and then uh, and then uh, we'll blue it, see if we can get a spotting on it. I gotta say, lifting and rigging on this job is nice. It appears it's pivoting on the uh, either end, which is usually a sign that it's worn in the middle now let's see what we got We got contact at the four corners. A little bit down along this edge here. Nothing on this side. And the reason I'm looking at this is because uh, this this is where the head, the spindle head mounts. And I put it up on the surface plate with the uh, column ways uh, down. And this appears to be out of square. So, um, th this being square to the column can be uh, all done within itself, within this casting. And that's a... Uh, there's no necess not necessarily a requirement to check other things to it because this becomes a foundation for uh, the the spindle head and then of course the knee. Um, so I just uh, wasn't necessarily planning on uh, scraping, but I think I might have to. So. <clears throat> I've been uh, working away at the four four corners really, and um, I think I've done maybe four different passes, uh, and maybe five now. That last pass, I really concentrated on hitting the high spots that were showing up. I've got very little blue on the plate, uh, bluing on the plate, I should say, and so um, you get feedback when you move the part on the bluing it, it um when you're on high when you're on high points it, it, it's easier to move and then when you then when you see the bluing you can actually see those high points with the really dark ring of bluing around it and then so if you concentrate on knocking those big points down then the whole surface drops and you can see here this last bluing picked up a lot of uh a lot of material here and I could feel that in the way it was moving on the plate. Getting uh, close on um, both flatness and uh, bearing surface.
and uh, this spotting cycle here I used uh, Jewelers Rouge as a background which helps the blue pop and um, as you get closer and closer to uh, picking up high high points trying to break things up and um, it gets it's easier to find those points when you have that red background in there one of the other things that's a good indicator of um, how flat a surface is getting is when you when you pivot um, that it's not pivoting at either end or in the center it's usually about a 70 30 split so It's looking pretty good. Get this blued up. We'll see what we got. So this will probably be my last cycle here. It's looking really good. Just going to break up a few more spots. And um, so yeah. So then now the column could be used. Uh, this this surface now could be used to spot the, uh, the the back of the knee too. So I think the next thing I want to do here in this um, qualification steps here is now that I've got this front of the column flat, um, I want the the spindle mounting or the head spindle head mounting uh, surface here to be perpendicular to this face here. Um, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure um, the the plane at which the angle of this plane relative to or this has to be perpendicular to the face, but it's um, I'm not sure how to describe that, but it, rotationally this way here is not maybe not critical for a spindle center line, but um, I still want to make sure that that's good as well, and that this surface here is square to the fixed side of the uh, column um, way here. So first step, I think um, I'm just going to file and stone this surface here and then uh, I'll spot it a few times while I've got some blue on the uh, surface plate here and just kind of see if there's anything obvious uh, as far as high points go mark them and then um, I'll put the recently scraped surface down on the surface plate and check how square or perpendicular this is and um, interrogate that against what I see as far as high points go and then there may be some opportunities to clean up some high points and move this closer to perpendicular to this face and that's kind of the key is understanding um, understanding how to arrive at a flat surface with the right um, surface finish in the right orientation as quickly as possible and sometimes that requires you to work maybe different because you know some information about its orientation relative to another surface which will help you get there quicker hope that makes sense Doesn't appear to be anything other than maybe right here you can see it. But the surface plate will tell us.
I think it shows up there. I did add some more um, blue to the surface plate, um, particularly when you have a, um, a rougher surface that's likely not flat. You don't want to have high points on that surface um, damaging your uh, your surface plate so a little bit of a of a heavier film and the bluing will help uh, identify high spots and protect the plate and i don't want to move this very much for the same reasons I just want to identify some high spots. So we definitely got something on this corner here. I was pretty sure that was going to end up high. Back in here looks a little spotted, so yeah. So it looks like the four corners are showing up as high spots. Which should um, translate into at least, um, I'll be looking for perpendicularity in this way here to the front. So high spot here, high spot here, I'll at least know that uh, if I've got to tip this surface at all, it'll be, it'll be good to, to run a square up against this and see what's going on on this surface with this flat on the plate. So I've used um, two different uh, squares, both six inch, um, unknown. Not the unknown apprentice, but unknown. And this is a Starrett uh, 55. I think it's a 55. Oh, well, you're going to have to take my word for it. Um, And I'm getting the same results with both squares. And I think you can just, yeah, you can see that in the camera there. So there's light up here at the top, nothing down at the bottom, both this side of the uh, uh, column and the side closest to the camera doing the same thing. Actually looks a little more on this side, closer to the camera. 1,000 shim. Just a slight bit of pressure on the square to hold it up against the column. And I was able, yeah, I can get it. I can get a 1,000 shim to start here on this side, but not on the other side. So, yeah, um, it's close, but we're looking for something better. So, uh, knowing this now, with the way the this surface blued up with the four corners being a bit high um, uh, what do I got to do I got to tip I got to tip this surface a little bit here which means I got to start down here closest to the uh, column ways and start working that and just kind of take uh, Take a little bit of a tip in the, in that surface and, and get it flat and straight at the same time, right? So the other thing that I wanted to look at at the same time, because um, uh, I want to make sure I adjust. This is the fixed side of the column. The, uh, the gib is on the opposite side, so this side needs to be perpendicular. Uh, to the spindle head face and uh, it's actually out a bit more 1000 shim is going in there no problem at six inches and then with um, with the square on the other side uh, I got the opposite so at the top of the square I'm touching at the bottom I'm not so that means uh, these two are 
although they haven't been verified parallel. They appear to be parallel, both the uh, fixed side and the Gibbs side. So I will make the adjustment to square this up with that spindle face or the spindle head uh, mounting face. So this is what I do to um, uh, set up for uh, what's called the step scraping. And in this case, I'm actually going to try and step scrape a compound angle. Um, so from the investigation off of this surface, we need to take more off of the front compared to the back and to the fixed uh, and the gibbed side here we know that we have to take more off of this side compared to this side so when you do that um, more more here more here that means this is going to become a zero spot up here um, and then I have just uh, I've broken this this surface um, this width here into four um, sections I've gone across here uh, six sections now two of them are missing because of this relief for the uh, for the spindle head but still um, if they were there I would have to scrape them in a pattern so I maintain um, that pattern I just don't scrape it um, so when you get all that said and done uh, I am gonna my first attempt is gonna be zero one two three um, zero one two three four five so zero five zero three and then three to eight and so what those numbers those numbers don't necessarily represent an amount of material it represents for me how many times I'm going to scrape each of these small sections so um, I will start with eight it will be scraped just kind of you know itself then the next time I scrape I will scrape uh, eight seven and seven then the next time after that you scrape eight seven seven six six and I have a six here, but the six is missing, so I don't scrape that, and so on and so forth. So what happens is, is you're scraping more and more and more and more on this compound angle, and then you get to this point here where you're, the last scraping cycle will include these two ones. Hope that makes sense. So what I do to keep track of that is... Um, I just scraped six, seven gets a second scraping, and eight is getting its third. So as I cycle through these and keep adding zones, uh, I should end up with eight ticks here. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So this is the uh, spindle head uh, mounting surface and um, uh, since the last uh, thing I filmed I did one more um, set of step scraping um, just to get the uh, fixed side of the column here straightened up and uh, it's come in nicely uh, and so now all I'm doing right now is just working on this surface to get it flat. Uh, this is just a mounting surface for a uh, machine part, so it's not a bearing or anything like that. It's just got to be, I don't know, I think the book calls out for, uh, I, I should probably look, but I, it's very little for maybe 12 points per square inch. Um, so anyways, just going to do a little bit of scraping on this to get this in the ballpark of uh, being flat and then do some more verifications and fine-tune it if I have to.
So I've done, uh, I don't know, maybe five cycles on this. And I just wanted to point out over here in this corner, um, I was getting, I was getting a mark on the actual surface plate where it was like, um, if you can imagine if you took your fingertip and moved the bluing, um, so there was a cleaning action going on and, uh, I searched for it for a couple of cycles and then I, I spotted it, which was a, a really high point here. And, uh, so I scraped that like just that cleaned everything, stoned everything, went through the whole process and then put it back on the plate. And then it, it, uh, was a much better spotting. So when you're spotting, you can feel the, the, the motion is slightly different. It sounds different. Uh, and you, and you got to look at the surface plate and, and understand what it's telling you too. So anyways, um, like I said, this is just a machine mating surface. Um, I think this will probably be my last cycle here. I'll just, I'll just break up a few points here, um, or a few areas, but it's looking good and, uh, geometry looks good now. So.